What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is tackle three examples of completing the square. And we're going to start with basic and then we're going to advance all the way into a more difficult example, which you can see right in front of you. So I'm going to do this working step by step, explaining the process of how to complete the square. But I'm also going to summarize some of the points that we're making on why and how we're doing it. So before we get started, I just want you to kind of look at these three equations and recognize that these are all in what we call our standard form. And that is in the form of y equals ax squared plus c. And standard form is awesome, but sometimes rewriting it in different forms is going to be helpful. And what completing the square helps us do is go ahead and write it in from standard form all the way into vertex form. And that is going to be the form of y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. Now, before we actually get into completing the square, there's one thing I really want you to pay attention to. Notice how the square changed. In standard form, it was just written as x squared. But in vertex form, we actually have a quantity that is being squared, right? That quantity x minus h squared. And that quantity is actually what we'll call a binomial squared. And what's really important is when you take a binomial and you square it, you produce what we call a perfect square trinomial. So what we're actually going to be doing here is we're actually going to try to create a perfect square trinomial. That is the process of completing the square, is finding a value, we like to call it C, that creates that perfect square trinomial. Now you can see in this, for example, we do not have a perfect square trinomial. 10 is not a square number. So what we're gonna need to do, we're going to create a perfect square trinomial. It's really important to note that you can only complete the square when your quadratic term has a coefficient of one. Notice how the first two examples were good. That third example, mm. That one's going to be fun, but we'll win on that one for another time. So what we're going to do is we're not going to focus on all three of these values. We're only going to focus on my first two terms, the X squared plus the two X. I want to create a perfect square trinomial from these terms. So how do we do that? Well, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take our middle term divided by two and squared. Also, we could summarize that by just saying B divided by two squared, right? Now, where again does C and B come from? Well, they come from standard form. Like here's the value C, right? That's the value we want it to be squared. And B represents our middle term. So we're going to do is going to take our B two divided by two quantity squared. So two divided by two is going to be one. One squared is just gonna to equal to a one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this value, right? This value C that created that perfect square trinomial and we're going to plug it inside of the parentheses. So the way that's gonna look here is y equals a x squared plus a two x plus one, right? plus a 10. Now, remember, like from your days of like when you first learn an equation, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side, right? But remember, like our goal here is to go from standard form to vertex form. So I don't really want anything with this y. So I could add a one to this y, but then I'm gonna have to subtract it to the other side anyways. So rather than adding on both sides, why don't we just add and subtract on the same side? So when I add a one here, I'm also gonna subtract it on the same side. So now let's go and verify that we have a perfect square trinomial. Now, again, if this is a perfect square trinomial, that means it can be factored into a binomial squared, meaning it can be broken down into two binomials that are exactly the same. So let's go ahead and try to factor this. What two numbers multiply to give you one that add to give you two? Oh, well, that one's kind of easy. That is y equals a x plus one times a x plus one. And 10 minus nine, that's going to be a positive nine. Now here's, I want you to see this. Like here's a binomial times a binomial, which means it's going to be a binomial squared. So that's going to be x plus one quantity squared plus nine. And guess what guys, you can now see that this is in a vertex form. All right, so now let's go and work on this next example. And hopefully you kind of, if you kind of look ahead, you might realize mm, this one does look a little more difficult. And why is it? And the reason being is your middle term is not divisible by two. So how are we still going to be able to do it? And the answer is yes. Again, all we want to do is make sure that my quadratic term has a coefficient of one right? Check. We have that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to group these first two terms. Again, this is where we're trying to create that perfect square trinomial. So now what we're going to do is going to find that value C. So again, remember C represents B divided by two squared. So that's going to be a negative seven divided by two squared. Well, I can't take two into seven, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. How can I square a negative seven halves? Well, you're just multiplying by itself. Negative seven halves times negative seven halves is going to be a 49 over four. So that is going to be my value that completes the square. I need to take that value and add it inside my parentheses. So when I do that, it's going to look like this. So I have a Y equals a quantity X squared minus a seven X. Now that's going to be plus a 49 over four. And again, remember whatever you add, you're also going to have to subtract. So let's subtract that. So a negative 49 over four, and then we got to make sure we subtract the three as well, right? Don't forget the little negative three at the end here. So this kind of looks confusing. And this one we factored and I was like, Oh, factoring, it's easy. Like, you know, not too bad. Like, how are you going to factor this one? And I think most students would agree. If I said, oh, go ahead and factor this, a lot of students would probably get confused. They look at the fraction, they look at larger number of 49, they say, there's no way I can do that. So let me give you a little tip. Remember, our little goal here is to rewrite this as a binomial squared. If something is kind of easily factorable, then yeah, factor it. You should be comfortable with factoring. But if you're not comfortable factoring or you have something that's a little bit more difficult to visualize, to find the value H, all you simply need to do 
is do plus or minus a B divided by two. Now again, I'm writing plus or minus because sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. To be able to determine that, look at the middle term of your trinomial. If your trinomial is negative, then you want an X minus H. If your middle of your term is trinomial is positive, then you want it to be an X plus H. And the whole reason of that is because remember, like when you expand this out, the middle term of your binomial is going to be the middle term of your trinomial. So in this case, we have a negative seven, which works out perfectly exactly for my B divided by two in this case, which was a negative seven halves. So now I can rewrite this as a Y times a X minus a seven half quantity squared. Now, again, some people might say, well, how are you getting this? Again, this is just my B divided by two, right? Negative seven halves is written here. Let's just pretend we were to multiply this out, right? Just like over here, it's X plus one quantity squared is X plus one times X plus one, meaning you're always going to multiply those last two terms. So let's make sure this works out. Negative seven halves times negative seven halves gives you a positive 49 halves correct. If you're going to add your middle terms, right? When you like expand using foil, you add those middle terms. That means negative seven halves plus a negative seven halves should give you a negative seven. So negative seven halves plus negative seven halves gives you a negative 14 halves, which again is a negative seven. So it does check out. Now this one is going to be a little confusing because how are we going to go and subtract now a fraction with a whole number? So how do you go ahead and do this? Well, the best way you want to be able to do this is really just to go ahead and rewrite this as a fraction. So I can go ahead and rewrite three as a fraction by just rewriting it as a three over one. And if I wanted to write this with a denominator four, I would simply just multiply by a four over four. And again, what that's doing is that's just creating what we call an equivalent fraction. I'm not changing the value. And this is going to be a 12 over four. Wouldn't you agree that 12 over four is still equal to a three over one times four over four, which is still equal to a three? Yes, it's the exact same value. So therefore what I can do now is I can rewrite this as a X minus a seven halves quantity squared minus a 49 over four and then minus a 12 over four. Well, now I have a fraction with the same denominators. I can now apply my operation to my numerators, which is going to give me a negative 61. So now you can see I have a final answer of y equals x minus seven halves quantity squared minus a 61 over four. I definitely did not leave myself any room. So let's go ahead and start with a fresh slate for my final example of the more difficult one. And the reason why this is the more difficult one is because we have this coefficient, right? I said from the beginning, you cannot have a coefficient for your x squared when you're trying to complete the square. So we need to get rid of this. So how can we do that? There's a couple different ways. And in this video, what I want to focus on is factoring it out. So let's just kind of do a quick little review. If I wanted to factor out a two from two X plus six, then I want you to recognize like factoring out a two is basically like dividing out the two, right? Two divides into two X as well as to six. So when I factor out a two, that's going to leave me with an X plus three. That's kind of fine and dandy. But what about if I had like a two X plus five, could I still factor out of the two? And a lot of students will get confused because five is not divisible by two, but guess what? You still can factor out the two. When I go ahead and factor out the two here, what I'm actually going to be left with is a five halves. And again, the reason why this works, guys, is because of distributed property. Factoring out something is just reverse distributed property. You can always multiply your value back to get back to your original equation. So two times X is two X, two times three is six, right? Two times X is two X, two times a five halves is just going to be a five. So that's the exact same process we're going to be working on over here. But again, the main caveat that I want you to understand is we're only going to be focusing on the first two terms. Don't worry about that little one. Keep the little one off to the side. First thing I need to do is I factor out this negative three. So when I factor out the negative three, that's gonna leave with an X squared. Now this is gonna become a positive four thirds X and then plus one. And again, the reason why it's a positive, because if you were to multiply this out, you want to make sure you get a negative four. Again, just mentally check your work here. I'm moving on to the next step is finding the perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial is B divided by two. So in this case, what we have here is my C is going to be a four thirds divided by two quantity squared. And a lot of times just the fractions just get students all confused. So let's kind of go through this step by step here real quick. If I took the four thirds and I divided by two, like how am I going to do that? Well, basically what you want to do is get rid of this two and to get rid of the two, you can multiply by the reciprocal, right? So if I multiply by the reciprocal, on the top and the bottom, that's going to give me a four over six. And in this case, it's just going to give me over one. So really dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of a one half. Now a four over six, I can reduce that. I can divide a two in the numerator and the denominator, which is now going to give me a reduced value of two thirds, which again is still equivalent. So that is going to be the value I'm going to add inside of my parentheses. And then just remember that's going to be a two thirds. That's going to be a quantity squared, right? So two thirds times two thirds is going to be a four over nine. Okay. So remember this is going to be the value that I'm going to be adding inside my parentheses. So now what I'll have is I have a Y equals a negative three times a X squared plus a four thirds X plus a four over nine. 
right? Now, again, remember we added a four and over nine, so therefore I need to subtract a four over nine, right? Just like I did in the other examples. However, there's something that's really important. I didn't add just a four over nine in parentheses here. I added a four over nine inside parentheses that was being multiplied by a negative three. Via distributed property, everything inside this parentheses is being multiplied by two. Everything inside this parentheses is being multiplied by negative three. So technically, if I'm keeping these equations balanced, if I multiply by four nines, that's being multiplied by negative three. When I subtract a four nines, I also need to multiply that by a negative three right? And again, it's all is because of distributive property. Don't forget about this one, right? I know it's like I said, push it to the side, but don't forget it still is there. So now let's go ahead and figure out how to write this as a binomial squared. And most students do not want to factor this. You could factor it, but a lot of students like to go into what is my H? Well, remember my H is going to be two thirds. And then notice my middle term is positive. I could write a negative three over nine. I could reduce that to a negative one third and negative times negative would be a positive. So therefore I could rewrite that as a positive four thirds. And then we can go ahead and rewrite that as one. Now let's go and check to make sure this works. If you were to multiply these last two terms, you should get four nines. That's what we have here, right? And then remember, if you're going to multiply this, the middle terms, your inner and your outer, you're going to have two thirds X plus two thirds X, which is going to be a four thirds X. So you can see that it works. Now, how are we going to go and add a one to a four thirds? Well, all we need to do is just rewrite a one as a three over three, right? We just want the denominators to be the same. So when we do that, we get a three over three plus four thirds, which is going to be a seven thirds. So therefore I have a final answer of Y equals negative three times an X plus a two thirds quantity squared plus a seven thirds. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this was helpful going from a basic example to a more difficult example, all in the same video. If this video is helpful, then please feel free to give me a super thanks or let me know in the comments down below. If you want more examples on completing the square or you want to go and check, take a look at the notes and resources that I provide my students in my own courses, then go and check out the playlist and links for you I have for you down below. Or you can definitely go and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.